All right, so having had a look at both our general environment as well as our industry environment, we're now going to look at a few more tools and concepts and models uh, that you can use in order to analyze your external environment. And the first that we're going to look at here is the driving forces analysis. Thankfully, we're not going to be talking about this abysmal TV show uh, that you can see on your right. Don't think it was in any way inspired by the type of driving force that we're going to look at today. The ones we are focusing on are the major underlying causes of change in any industries and the competitive conditions. So what are the things that are driving uh, different changes and trends within an industry? When you look at an industry and you can see that certain conditions and factors are changing, what is causing that? There are three steps in terms of undertaking your driving force analysis. First of all, obviously, you need to work out what the driving forces are. You need to work out what are these changes and trends that you've identified in the industry. And once you've done that, you can then uh, how or assess whether they are on the whole. Now, again, there will be differences. To, if there, there will be a range of driving forces which will have different impacts, but overall, how are they acting to make the industry more or less attractive? Now, some of them clearly will make it less attractive. Growing, de uh, slowing demand, for example, will make things more difficult. But there are others which are going to make it more attractive. So you need to work out what effect each of these driving forces are going to have and make an overall assessment there too. And then determine what strategy changes, if any, are necessary to prepare your company for the impact of those driving forces. How can you change your strategy to try and take advantage of those driving forces which are creating a positive impact? And how can you try and minimise the impact of those negative driving forces you've identified? So the common types of driving forces that we look at, things like the increasing globalisation of an industry, um, changes in the cost and efficiency, obviously if it's becoming more expensive that will be a negative driving uh, factor or driving force. The market shift from standardised to differentiated products, and the introduction of new laws and policies um, which will make your life more difficult or easy as a firm. Uh, any changes in societal concerns, the attitudes, the lifestyle choices that people are making within a certain population, as well as the degree of uncertainty and risk. I think it's becoming more or less complex in an industry. How many factors uh, do you have to deal with and are they frequently changing or not? Once you've worked out your driving forces, you can then perhaps undertake a, a second related form of analysis called the key success factors analysis. And you can see my very witty use of the diagrams there. That is a key with the word success, yes. It only took me about three hours to think find that. Key success factors or KSFs are that any strategy elements, product and service attributes, operational approaches, resources, competitive capabilities that are necessary for competitive success by any and all firms in an industry. What does that mean? It means that KSFs, those things that any firm, any firm, must do in order to survive in an industry. They are basically the bare minimum in order for you to be competitive with any given industry. They are what you have to do. They won't necessarily guarantee that you will have a competitive advantage as such. Um, they won't even necessarily guarantee that you'll be uh, better than your rivals in any way. But if you don't uh, have these key success factors covered, then you are not going to be able to survive in an industry. They will vary from one industry to another, uh, and certainly over time they will develop and change even within a, the same industry. Um, and importance also as those drives have changed, the driving forces we talked about previously, and the competitive conditions change over time as well. So what we often find is that the driving forces we looked at previously will actually change the key success factors in a particular industry. Now, when you are trying to identify your KSFs, there are three questions you need to ask yourself as a firm. First of all, on what basis do buyers of the industry's product choose between the competing brands of sellers? That is, what are the product attributes and service characteristics that are crucial to competitive success? What must we have and what must we offer as a firm in order for us to be competitive? Secondly, given the nature of competitive rivalry prevailing in the marketplace, what resources and competitive capabilities must we have in order to be competitive? So what resources, capabilities, and potentially even core competencies that we talked about last week 
must a firm have in order for you to be successful? Also, what shortcomings are almost certain to put a firm at a significant competitive disadvantage? So what things, if you don't have them or if you do them badly, are definitely going to set you back relative to your competitors? They, those three questions there will give you a really good understanding of what are the key success factors in your industry. So some common examples that we've got here, things like you might have technology related key success factors like having scientific research expertise, expertise in a given technology um, or the capability to use the internet well to conduct your various business activities and transactions. Um, they might be marketing related, so you might need clever advertising to survive. You might need to have fast, accurate technical assistance in order to be competitive. Um, you also might need organisational <laughs> capability related key success factors. So having superior or at least competitive information systems, internet, to con the internet and the superior ability to employ it to conduct your business. More experience and managerial know-how. These are the sorts of things that in many instances are necessary requirements in order for your firm to be competitive within its given industry. The final little tool or analysis that we're going to look at here is the industry and life cycle analysis. This is very much a generic and broad tool that we can use to assess the, what stage of a, a life cycle our industry may be. Um, and certainly there are five stages that we're going to look at here today. So initially when an industry first is created, often by one or two competitors, uh, devising a new or innovative product that basically creates its own industry, that is what we call or term the embryonic stage of that industry. It is, as you can see on the diagram here, it is only in its initial stages and demand is increasing, but it's still only relatively low, given the short time frame that the industry has existed for. And also people are still getting their heads around a lot of the time this new product that is being offered in the industry. As time goes on, what we often see is we enter the growth stage, which, not surprisingly, exhibits greater levels of industry growth in terms of the demand. As new buyers uh, start to realise that this is a new great product or they're recognising and becoming more aware of particular brands and, and competitors within the industry, the sales and demand typically grows. And this is where a lot of uh, companies begin to enter the market as they recognise that opportunity for profit there. Once we further move down the industry life cycle, we often enter what we call the shakeout stage. This is where, as you can see here, demand is still growing, but it's ever so slightly, it's probably peaked uh, in terms of its growth of the demand, and it's starting to slow down here in this second stage here. As a result, we tend to find the competition starts to heat up here, um, unlike in the growth stage where there were plenty of sales and demand to go around um, and firms weren't having to compete terribly diff uh, hard. In the shakeout stage, the, the successful firms start to emerge and those who potentially don't have the key success factors that we talked about previously may even drop out um, of that particular industry. As time goes on even further, we'll then enter the maturity stage of the industry life cycle. As you can see here, this is where demand uh, often actually not only slows, but it may actually start to decline in the second half there. So you can actually see sales are actually going down now. As a consequence, the competition becomes even more fierce, as we touched on earlier in this week's content. When there is slowing demand or growth, that means that the existing firms are going to have to fight even harder to maintain their market share. And so it becomes more difficult to make money in this stage of the industry life cycle. Once you get into decline, that becomes even more the case. And this is where we see a significant drop off in firms who exit the market um, or industry often because they simply cannot make enough money here. Such is the decline in the demand for whatever it is that that industry offers. In terms of your strategy therefore to suit these different stages of the industry life cycle, as we can see here in those embryonic or growth stages we're mainly looking for entrepreneurial actions. Those things that are going to enable you as a firm to exploit open niches that you've identified and sort of really take advantage of the increase in sales and demand. 
This continues on to, into the growth stage and where you have, not surprisingly, growth-oriented actions that we're looking for in your strategy that exploit factors of production and really enable you to produce as much as you can to take advantage of the growth in the industry. Once we start to get to the mature age, you're starting to look at more action power derived actions as a firm in your strategy where you can exploit your market position potentially at the expense of others. So you're looking to at least maintain, if not continue to grow your industry market share. Um, and that might mean that you have to in eat into your competitors market share, uh, which it might involve things like involving in pro uh, engaging in price wars or other competitive actions to try and increase your uh, market share while the demand potentially slows.